Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Cedar for PhysioForm. Do you ever wonder why sometimes you see patients with temporomandibular dysfunction and cervical headaches that also present with dizziness? Uh, there's an interesting explanation for that that we're going to talk a little bit about today. In the craniomandibular system, there is a ton of neurological overlap that occurs between the trigeminal system and the cervical system and even down into the sympathetic system and the thoracic spine. Very complex system that we get into a lot of detail in the neurophysiology component of the TMD course, but to give you a little bit of a snapshot, there's something in our brainstem called the trigeminocervical complex. It's basically like a interstate of overlap between these systems whereby the trigeminal system and the cervical system tie in. So one of the interesting things that we see in this system is the trigeminal system's innervation of the internal carotid artery that actually happens to supply the vestibular system of the inner ear. How does this present clinic? I had a patient that came in, this was just a couple of weeks ago, uh, primary complaints of right-sided facial pain. She said that she had had an onset probably in the last three months, kind of insidious, uh, went to the dentist, you know, they were looking at the teeth. She's had some splints made in the past, but really pointing to pain here. And I noticed in the clinical exam that I would get her to stand up straight. She had a significant entry, increase in postural sway. Whenever we did cervical motions, she would start to lose her balance. Well, as I dig, dug a little deeper into the process, uh, into the history, she started to discuss that four years prior she was actually in the back of a pickup truck don't know exactly what was going on but she fell out hit her head and started having some neck pain but it was off and on wasn't a big thing she even associated with a problem uh, one of the interesting findings just in general observation of hers when she came in she stood and had a little bit of a subcranial side bend now Second visit as we start getting in, I start to figure out, wow, there's, there's a lot of things going on here and these patients are never just straightforward, right? So she also had, we put her on the table to do some further evaluation, started having back spasms. So you start to see this picture emerge where there's these global things going on. And, uh, but one of the interesting findings again was when we started digging deeper and we got into treatment is she did have some subcranial limitations of movement. We also know that the uh, vertebral artery, right, actually does that big twist before it enters the foramen magnum up at the upper cervical spine. And one of the things that we noticed as we started treating her, a lot of her facial pain was actually being provoked uh, suboccipitally from the musculature, but a lot of the problem had to do with the shift that had happened probably subsequent to the injury falling out of the truck four years prior. So her treatment plan has involved stuff uh, addressing the upper cervical limits, addressing what has been diagnosed now as a thoracic disc irritation, working a lot on posture, her ergonomics at work, she works at a desk, uh, and dealing with the whole picture. And interestingly, her balance is actually improving now. So the trigeminal cervical system really uh, explains, is the neurological explanation for why you can see some crazy stuff in this area. So. Hope that was informative. Like I said, uh, please take the opportunity if you have, if you can, to uh, attend one of our courses. We go into into depth on how to assess this and better intervene. And uh, take care.